What is going on, everybody? Sam is back again with another YouTube video, and in today's YouTube video, we're going to be back testing um fifteen minute breaks, of, sorry, fifteen minute liquidity sweeps followed by breaks of structures, uh, ICT's twenty twenty two mentorship model essentially without a daily bias. I'm going to see if that's worth it. I know a lot of people I to trade without daily bias. I personally have not been in favor of it. And in the last video, I should prove to you guys why that's not really good. Um, simply because of the fact that you know I tested out all of January twenty twenty two. And what ended up happening was, is that, you know, we only ended up like two hour in profit on our win rate was like 40%. It was terrible, right? But this time I went back and I actually tested January as well. But last time I was waiting for breaks of structures slash order block entries, right? And what ended up happening was, is that there were a bunch of trades that actually ended up happening that won where you didn't get, a, um, you didn't get price to retrace back into an order block or a fair value gap, but you did enter, if you did enter off the break of structure, you could have just ended up in a huge amount of profit, right? And so when I went back and tested it without, with it just entering off breaks of structure instead of waiting for prices to retrace to a fair value gap on an order block, I ended up um, banking, I think, 5R in back testing, right? And so because of that, I thought, well, maybe this is a good trade idea, right? Maybe instead of um, caring about fair value gaps and order blocks like ICT wants you to, right? Uh, you should just trade off breaks of structure. Again, ICT is the model, right? It's his 2022 mentorship model. But he has a specific way of trading that fits his personality, right? If something else works, you should be doing it, right? It's not just one size fits all, right? Yes, he is the creator of this model and it would benefit you to be very close and resemble that model as best as you can. But if something works for you that's um, different from what works for him, that's perfectly fine as well, right? So I'm gonna test that out. I'm gonna test from February because I already tested it in January and I already know the results. So it's kind of like boring. I hope you guys can just trust me when I say I banked 5R of backtesting or the backtesting bank 5R, not me. Um, Just going off 15 minute breaks of structures instead of waiting for the fair value. So now we're going to do February as well. And I did actually start to test February already, but then what ended up happening was that uh, I realized I should make a video on it instead. So <laughs> we're going to do the video in the middle of the backtesting session. So when was it? So as you guys can see, we have already took two trades, right? Where it's the 2nd of February and both of them were losers, right? So this was the second trade. So, and the first trade I'll show you guys as well. So we're already down two R for the month of February. And I'll go over the strategy again with you guys really quickly, just in case you guys missed last week's video or yesterday's video. And if you did miss it, the heck man, go back and watch it. So you guys know what I'm talking about. Anyways, so again, two losers, let's go back. Uh, so essentially what we're going to be testing is we're going to be looking for, we're going to wait in before the market opens and we're going to mark out the 15 minute highs and the 15 minute lows. Right, so this candle closes at 9.30 and then we're gonna drop down to the one minute after marking our 15 minute highs and lows. We're gonna wait for liquidity sweep. We're gonna wait for a break of structure, enter off the break of structure with a stop loss at the lows. At a one to one, we move our stop loss to break even. And at a one to 1.5, we take profit. Now, could you take profit at a one to two? Could you not move your stop loss to break even? Yes, there's a bunch of things that you could do. I am not gonna test it like that. Okay, so if you guys think that maybe holding to a one to two is good, um, much better, uh, you can definitely, and you're interested in the strategy, definitely test it out by yourself. For me, me personally, I would much rather close it at a one to 1.5. I like to hit singles. I like to hit doubles. I don't really like, you know, going for the home runs every single day, right? So anyways, just like this, right? Guys, we're going to mark out our 15 minute highs and 15 minute lows, drop down to the one minute and just wait for a sweep. All right, once we get a sweep, all we're waiting for is, or yeah, once we're getting, once we get a sweep, we're just waiting for a break of structure. And boom, so we got a sweep right over here. Now we're just waiting for a break of structure. Where's the structure right over here? And I'll mark out the structure whenever we break it just so it's easier for you guys to see. So bam, higher, lower, higher, right? This is our structure, right? And as you guys can see, we broke structure right over here. So I'm gonna put my star, I'm gonna put my entry right over here, stop us at these highs, and we're targeting a one to one first, and at a one to one, we're moving our stoppers to break even, and then at a one to 1.5, we're taking it all off, right? No partials, no nothing. And again, if price gets close enough, it's at like 0.95, I'll move my stoppers to break even. Uh, there's no point in holding it if it's that close. And as you guys can see, we just hit a stop loss. So that's three trades in a row that are all losers um, in the beginning of February. All right, so first three trades of trading February, all losers. And as you guys can see, if you're seeing what I'm doing right now, if you're questioning it, I'm just skipping far forward. This is, uh, I'm skipping to 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, right? And that's when the market opens. That's when most volatility is. That's when you should be trading, right? Because that's when most of the amount of volume is also present in the market. So you're going to get your best opportunities when there's almost, when there's a large amount of volume. Okay, bam, right over here. Cool. We sweep liquidity and we sweep uh, buy side liquidity and we're enter off the break of structure, stop us at these highs and we're targeting these lows. Over here, we move our stop loss to break even. Okay, we move our stop loss to break even. Service. And then right over here, uh, do we get it? 
Here we get it. Oh, it's so close to 1 to 1 1.5. Well, we didn't move our softest to break even yet. And we would have. Okay, so that got took out of break even. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. It is what it is. Would have been a winning trade. But yeah, you know, sometimes you shouldn't be moving your softest to break even. Or sometimes it's beneficial not to. That's what I should say. Right? Because of that trade would have hit our take profit had we not moved our softest to break even. So it is what it is, guys. Um, okay, over here, I don't really know if there's a, there is a lever. Let's see, what's the lower here? Oh, 09.17, and then what's the lower here? Oh, 09, oh, wait, am I reading it? Oh, no, okay, cool. Cool, right over here, and then. Right, so what gets swept first? Cool, sell side gets swept first. Okay, break of structure right rear. And this is what we're testing is literally simple process. Now, one of the reasons why I like this strategy a lot is because of, oops, that's not where the entry will be. One of the reasons why I like this strategy a lot is because it's super objective, right? I love objective strategies because there's no guesswork, right? You don't have to guess where you're putting the stop loss. You don't have to guess where you're putting the take profit. You don't have to guess when you're entering, exiting, all of that, right? Everything's already laid out for you. Okay, cool. And there's four losses in a row. Jeez, guys, we are February starting off terrible, guys. February is absolutely terrible. A week into February, guys, and we're just absolutely not killing the game guys but again that's what back testing is for maybe the strategy is absolutely horrendous and you shouldn't be trading it and i went a little bit too far forward that's it oopsie my bad um i don't think there was any level of buy side that we uh, sorry sell side that we swept so yeah sells we would be taking sells because you said buy side bam right over here cool oops i should have been marking this out in my journal first that's uh you know, I'll do that right now. I'll open up a journal right now and start marking it out. Okay, so this is my journal uh, for this strategy, at least for this month. So as you can see, LLLL, because we have four lives in a row, maybe this will be a winner, hopefully. Let's see. Okay, Um, I think we would have moved our stop list to break even. Maybe now with spread. So let me see what happened with spread. Because I am counting spread in this, guys. I don't, it's not the, um, the most accurate spread though. Okay, yeah, I would have moved my stop list to break even. Let's see, what, do we hit take profit or do we hit stop loss? We had stop loss. Good thing I moved my stop loss to break even. <laughs> but I am kind of spread in this testing, by the way, guys. I know, I know a lot of back testers don't count spread. Um, and they have a multitude of reasons for that. It just makes it easier to not count spread. They say that different brokers have different spreads, so they don't count it, so that you can implement your own spread, uh, own trade, I mean, own spreads. But me personally, guys, I don't understand why you wouldn't count spread. Um, it makes no sense not to, simply because of the fact that... um. You know, everybody's going to face spread. So whether your spread is exactly equal to what um somebody else is facing or not does not matter, right? Because at the end of the day, it's much better to account for something than not account for it, right? Because you can have a strategy that is profitable until you account for spread, right? Once you account for spread, you realize, oh, shoot, that property absolutely, that strategy absolutely sucks, right? So just, just something to think about, guys. Yeah, I probably want to move my stop loss to break even at that point. But I would be watching it for sure. Okay, now I would have moved my stop loss to break even and then bam, take profit hit. So finally we hit take profit. Oh, I forgot to count. I'm pretty sure we'll hit a break even trade. We'll see. Cool. Anyways, uh did I go too far forward? No. Ten days into February. Well, this will be the tenth day into February. So let's see what ends up happening. Let's mark at the lows, mark at the highs. Also, as you guys can see, like even with this objective strategy, right, guys, I could just be skipping and then just seeing which one is swiped first and doing the entry after. But I'm training my by looking at this these charts all the time. I'm training my eyes to consistently look and gather data. How do the candles move? What ends up happening? When? Right. All these things are training, right? By fast forwarding it, I'm just getting the data quicker. Right. But at the end of the day, I know that candles print like this. You know, oftentimes what ends up happening is that the patterns in the market repeat themselves consistently. Break a structure right over here. And so we're entering and start, stop us below these lows. But going back to what I was saying, um, patterns in the market consistently repeat themselves. So sometimes there are patterns that you can just recognize as a day trader and figure it out and be like, hmm, you know what? I've seen this pattern before. Maybe I should, exit, or maybe I should hold, or maybe I should enter, even though it doesn't mark my strategy. Right, guys? So. You know, it is just something that you guys should be thinking about. There are definitely patterns out there. And yeah, you by looking at live data feed all the time, this is a breaking trade, by the way, guys. Um, you'll figure that out. And when you notice these patterns, it's very beneficial because it just becomes like unconscious to you that like you see the same thing happen, you know, 10 times in a row, not 10 times in a row, sorry, 10 times. You're going to notice like, hmm, maybe I should, you know, continue looking at this. Maybe that is something to watch out for.
you know, so it's very beneficial to actually watch it instead of looking at everything from hindsight. That's what I really like about platforms like this, where you can actually watch the candlesticks print. Um, okay, cool. Hi, we're here. Entry over here. Couple of city lows. Okay, we would we already be at break even, so. And then bam, we hit TP right over here. So this is one of those days, guys, where um, you know, if you were entering, you would have looked for like a fair value gap, and you just never get that entry, right? It comes very close, but then it goes, right? It doesn't actually tap into this. So you know, if you're waiting for a fair value gap, you don't actually get the entry. Uh so it is what it is, guys. It's unfortunate, but sometimes sometimes stuff is like that is going to happen. Wait, why am I using the calculator then? I can just do it on Excel later on when I can just sum it up. We'll see. Anyways, back to you, back to some. Hmm. There was a next level of liquidity. We sub this liquidity. Sub that liquidity. So this is the next level. Yeah, it might be a little bit off. So I should be aware of that. Oh, well, something like that, you sweep so quickly. Cool, entry right over here. Stop us at these lows. There, stop us at these lows. See what ends up happening. Okay, bam, do we hit take profit? Yeah, we hit take profit. One to 1.5 right over here. Cool. So yeah, beginning of February, guys, kind of sucked. But um, as you guys can see, the last five trades we've took have been all winners. And uh, two of those trades were only break even. So we had, you know, three trades that actually hit our full take profit level, you know. Um, so that's good. That's good. Sometimes what it just ends up happening at the beginning of the month, guys, you just, oh, shoot, I went too far forward. Um, sometimes what ends up happening with the beginning of the month is that, you know, just news releases that end up happening that really affects the market, you know, because a lot of the bigger banks, bigger institutions that are trading, they're waiting for the news releases to come out and sort of let them do what they do in the market and then they're trading right so there's not a lot of volume that's happening in the market there's not a lot of patterns forming not a lot of anything actually so you know sometimes what can end up happening is is that because of that it's if we get a lot of choppy conditions and when chop happens guys when there's terrible price action that's when you start losing out that's when we start losing trade sorry not losing out okay that's a loss you know like this this is just absolutely terrible price action guys i mean what is happening here not a clean direction whatsoever, right? We're just in this range. That's terrible price action. A lot of people ask me, you know, how can I identify terrible price action? And honestly, it's simply just because of the fact that when you look at it, if it's not easy for you to find the trend, if it, if you can't look at it like right now, wait, this is great price action, right? Great price action up, great price action down, right? How easy is it to spot the trend like that instantly? Now let's look. Now let's look at this. How easy is it to spot this trend, like that? How easy is is it to spot the trend over here in this box? Not easy, right? It's as simple as that. When you can't easily form candlestick, find candlestick panels, when you can't easily find anything, that's really when the issues rise, right? So that's when you realize that, like, oh shoot, I'm in bad market conditions right now. So maybe you should just stay away from trading. Honestly, I don't necessarily stay away from those days. Um, simply because I know that. I could trade it, right? Uh, if anything happens, I can trade it. I know what I'm doing. But, you know, you, maybe you as a beginner don't shouldn't be trading that. Right? It's just something that you have to look out for. And personally, as a beginner, I would suggest you not to take trade, trades of those days. Again, another day that's just terrible price action. I've been noticing that there's a lot of terrible price action recently. Okay, well, it's 11 a.m., so I don't trade past 11. So I'm just going to stop trading. After 11, the market volume dries down in the stock market. So yeah, no real reason to trade after 11 a.m., guys. You only would be trading when there's volume. So you don't trade in like US 500 during the Asian session or like the London session, right? Who's trading US 500 in the London session, right? They have their own markets to trade. What do, what do the London people trade? Like Russell 2000? Is that what it's called? I don't know. No, is Russell 2000 American? I, I don't even know, guys. Okay, cool. We got a breakdown right over here. Break of structure. Oof. Did we get ticked out of break even? Not yet, but probably we swear we would have, honestly. Yeah, we got took out of break even. That's tough. 
Okay, we were about, well, a little over halfway through February. So I'm curious to see what our performance is like. Very curious to see. Because we did start to win a little bit more trades recently. So well, that is definitely, definitely good news. The brick construction. Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> Is there news at 10 o'clock or something? That's probably what ended up happening. That's tough. Yeah, by the way, guys, I trade during news. No cap. Unless if it's like terrible. Oh, I mean, you know, stuff like NFP, stuff like un unemployment, I don't trade. But um, that happens before market opens, anyways. So I don't really, you know, that doesn't affect me too much. The other high impact news, like freaking uh, PMI services, stuff like that, I trade with just because, you know, Usually it doesn't. I've looked at the testing and it works out much better for me to trade that than not trade it. Bam. Where does that line go? The next area of liquidity right over here. Geez, all the way back in January, that's the next area of liquidity. Okay, they didn't matter because we didn't go that far. Anyways. That's tough. Um, pool, this happened. Um, no trade up until the wow. This is going to be a massive stop loss. Actually, it's not as big as I thought it was. That's what she said. Okay. Okay, well, melting anyways. We definitely would have moved our stop loss to break even now, so that's good. Risk free trade for now. Come on, hurry it up. Okay, I think we could take profit by now. Yeah, I think we did too, but I didn't account for spread in this trade, so probably be spread something like that. 403, 4.98. Yeah, 403, 4.9. Yeah, something like that. So. If it goes a little bit lower, then yeah, we definitely hit tick profit. And bam, yeah, we definitely hit tick profit. So, oh, cool. Yeah. See, you gotta be meticulous when you test guys. Can't have any biases, can't have any, you know, can't have any misinputs. You gotta be meticulous. Make sure that you're actually trading properly. Right, trade the way you should be back testing and trade it. Well, when you're back testing, you should treat trading the same exact way as if you were doing it in the live market conditions. That's the only way backtesting actually makes sense, right? Without knowing the data beforehand, right? I don't know if we're gonna get, when we're gonna get a break structure, right? Obviously now I know because it happened, but I don't know before. I don't know if this trade is gonna win. I don't know if this trade is gonna lose. I have no idea what's gonna end up happening. All I know is that the way I'm trading, though I should be trading, this is where I'm gonna put my stop loss. This is what I'm gonna enter. This is where my take profit, all that jazz, right? Ben, we hit take profit one, cool. So now I know that I would move my stop loss to break even. Right, and I'd be holding up until hopefully we hit the perfect target, which we do. Cool, that's another winning trade or no? Simple as that, guys. That's how you should be dressed. trading, right? And that's gonna make trading in the live market conditions even easier for you. If you treat your back testing like live, um, trading, it'll definitely, definitely make back testing. Uh, I mean, your live trading so much easier. Yes, there's no psychological aspect to it, of course, but the other aspects of trading, right? Actually, reading market. Uh, conditions, right? Being able to figure out structure, right? Figure out the trend, entering, exiting, stop loss placement, all that. Everything is going to become so much easier for you as a result of trading back testing, such as the same exact way that you would treat live trading. Also, for some reason, my computer is lagging. So, what the heck is going on? Hello? Come on. Whoa, what the heck happened here? Um, okay. I don't think a 945 actually look like that. Just going to be completely honest with you guys. So I trade it anyways. There's no way. Yeah, there's no way we move like that. Come on. Come on. There's no way we had a 100, a 200 pip movement at a, a random Thursday. Anyways. I don't even know. Should I, should I, should I sweep? Could it, should I count that as a sweep? All right, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to a separate platform and I'm going to see what actually ended up happening on Thursday the 23rd. At 9 45 
uh, whether or not it's swapped liquidity. So I will be back. Okay, guys. So I just went to my second platform um, to see what the heck Spy did on that day, and there was no sweep. So news. I, I guess this was a news release, but nothing like that ended up happening. Um. So yeah, we're just gonna continue uh, waiting for a sweep of either direction, but there was no sweep prior to that. So. Okay, cool. We finally got a sweep. We got a break of structure as well. Um, would I take this? I don't know. It's 11 o'clock. So, you know what? Screw it. I'll take it anyways. Even though I shouldn't, I said after 11, I don't trade. This would end up at 11 01 technically. So, yikes. Oh, yeah, of course I shouldn't have traded. That's tough. So you follow your rules, guys. Anyways, on to the next day. I definitely did think we got a sweep, though. But I just checked on the other source, and then we didn't get any sweep. So here's what it is, guys. Oh, my God. I hate when this happens, guys. I hate when there's no, like, freaking, um, I hate when there's no, like, clear level of liquidity. They have to go all the way like find something it's always annoying come on come on come on oh my goodness jeez okay finally okay yeah finally, finally we get an area of liquidity chart And I was wondering why I was so spread out is because of that. I blessed. Uh, okay, cool. I get a break. I kind of spoil it for you guys, but we got structure right over here. As you guys can see, I'm pretty sloppy with it just because I can see it, but you guys should be able to get the general gist just of how I'm entering, how I'm exiting, what the breaks of structure are and everything. Cool. Oh, that's where a sub loss would be. Uh, yeah, honestly, I probably would have moved my stop loss to break even. Honestly. Find that point. Yeah, 0.94 with that close. Yeah, probably, honestly. That's soft. That's tough. Because it'll probably hit take profit now. Yeah. Actually, no, maybe it goes to break even. Probably wouldn't have hit take profit now, but yeah, okay, what if it break even? So, either way, what, have, well, what the heck happened? For some reason, that just closed my tab. Okay, uh, B or B, guys. Okay, cool. So, break even, what 15 trades or 14, something like that. Uh, and we're almost done with February, so we're very close to seeing what the heck. February is going to resort just from 15 minute areas of liquidity. And again, as I said before, um, I like trading with daily buys, so I'm not a big fan of this, but who knows? Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm wrong. You know, January did prove that I could be wrong, you know, with um freaking uh the whole uh the whole um five R in game, you know, five R is good. Five R is definitely good, guys. We haven't break structure anywhere. Up, down, up, down, bam, right over here. Now we break structure. Pause that at the right time. Cool. Stop us at these lows. Cool. I think we hit take profit by now. Yeah, we definitely did. What the heck? I did it again. I, I, why is it deleting the tab? Hold on. I'll be right back. Okay. Cool. I updated the journal after this trade. What? Going down, my friends are just texting, so I was like, Oh, and now they're calling me, so I will be right back. I keep pausing and recording the video, but just everybody for some reason, everything keeps on going on for some reason. Okay, after so many interruptions, <laughs> we have finally gone back to testing. Um, this is the last day of February, so we'll see what ends up happening. Bam, we got a break structure. I'd already marked out the liquidity areas of liquidity, by the way, and we got a break structure right over here. Comment down below, do you guys think this is going to win? Do you guys think this is going to lose? Me personally, 
I think he's going to win. I think he's going to hit four take profit. So, okay, could be anybody's game now. Okay, still could be anybody's game. Actually, have we moved? Should we have moved our sawbus to break even already? No, definitely not. Definitely not. Okay, wow, well, terrible price action, but. Oh, we're getting a comeback. Oh, oh. Okay, I think by now we would have moved our stop loss to break even. And we did not hit our stop loss at all. So that's a good sign. Uh, oh, with spread, maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. Let's calculate that. Let's spread it be like here. Eh, probably. I probably would have moved my stop loss to break even. And we get took out our break even. That's tough. That was so anticlimactic, guys. Oh, well, now it's rising. Now it's rising. Now it would have definitely hit 1R. So if it goes back down, oh my god. That's tough. That is tough, guys. That is tough. Wow. Close. Was it? I mean, let me just make sure that I had everything. Maybe I can justify not moving my stop loss to break even at that point. Energy price. Stop loss. Stop loss. 6939. Yeah, honestly, guys, with that much choppy action, I definitely would have moved my stop list to break even by this point. So we get to get a break even. Unfortunate because it went to hit our take profit anyways, but it is what it is, guys. So now let's see the sum. Do, 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 do. Enter 3R. So yeah, not the most amazing performance, guys. Then again, it could just be because February was a terrible week, uh, terrible month. Um, I don't know. There's not a lot of losing trades if you actually look, guys. There was one, two, three, four, five, six, six losing trades. So you had like a 66% win rate. However, uh, there was a lot of trades that hit break even. So potentially it might just be worth it to, you know, maybe take partials, maybe maybe not take partials, maybe just take it all off at TV1. You know, let's see what would end up happening. If we, if we copy this entire thing, guys, right? And we replace every break even, everything with just TP1, right? So every winning trade with just one R and gain, like that. And then what? What's or some? Your sun ends up being five R. But again, there are some trades where I move my stop loss to break even when it was close, but not really. I can count two instances, so it ends up being three R anyways. So you know, it's up to you if you want to trade this strategy, guys, without daily bias. Uh, me personally, I would say definitely implement daily buys it'll just get your win rate much higher it'll st stop you from taking some trades but the trades that you do take will be much much better that being said guys like the video comment down below subscribe to the channel and peace out